Hello? Oh, and why do you want to study chemical engineering? I, I like chemistry, and so I ended up in chemical engineering. We've got some myths to debunk. Hey there, welcome to ChemEng Weekly. Hey there, welcome to ChemEng Weekly, where we cover all things chemical engineering, from universities to careers. Over my time in chemical engineering, both mentoring students at university and studying it myself, there's been a number of myths that keep coming up. Some of them seem logical, others not so much. So what are the biggest myths and are they actually true? To answer this exact question, I've enlisted the help of my good friend, Emmanuel, the ChemEng guy, and today we will go over the top 10 biggest myths about chemical engineering, the first part of which you're watching right now. Ensure that you watch the video right until the end, with the second part being linked in the description down below, as well as the ChemEng guy's channel. So without much further ado, let's jump right into it. Myth number 10. All chemical engineers go into oil and gas. Now, although some chemical engineers do go into oil and gas, it's just not true that all chemical engineers go into the oil and gas industry. This comes from the thought that chemical engineering is all just oil and gas because that's where traditionally it came from. But that's just simply not true. There's a number of industries that chemical engineers can go into. Now, depending on the specialization of the degree, chemical engineer graduates can actually go into a number of fields such as water treatment, pharmaceuticals, textiles and renewable energy, to name a few. And it's not just limited to these fields. It can also be a number of other fields, but it's not imperative that chemical engineers have to go into industry. You can also go into research, doing a PhD in things like vaccine development, renewable energy technologies, as well as water treatment, to name a few. Myth number nine, chemical engineers don't care about the environment. Now, this sort of comes from the connection between chemical engineering and oil and gas again, because oil and gas has not the cleanest track record when it comes to fossil fuels, climate change, and the environmental impact it has had over the years. However, it's simply not true that chemical engineers have a disregard for the environment. In fact, it's quite the opposite. One of the key things a chemical engineer has to do as part of their work is evaluate the impact they're having on the planet as a whole by the actions they're doing, which is why it's often interchangeably taught alongside environmental engineering as well as other things. So chemical engineers do actually care about the environment and climate change more than you think because they have a responsibility to mitigate against the effects of it through the work that they do. In fact, one of the key modules that every chemical engineer must study as a requirement is environmental management which teaches them to mitigate against creating negative effects on the environment through their mass, energy and recycle balances when setting up a new plant. That's why many chemical engineers can actually go into things like carbon capture, as well as renewable energy. Now, it's my pleasure to welcome onto the channel my good friend and fellow chemical engineering content creator, Emmanuel from The ChemEng Guy. Hey there, Yip. Thanks for having me. I'm always happy to collaborate with fellow chemical engineers. And as you stated, there are a lot of myths and lies underlying the chemical engineering field. So let's check them out. Myth number eight, chemical engineering is a dying field. And I'm pretty sure that you are quite familiar with this. Maybe since you were already researching for engineering degrees, maybe STEM degrees, or you were comparing between computer science, mechanical engineering, or overall going for something related towards chemistry or chemical engineering. Whatever the case this may be, I'm pretty sure that you stumble upon the idea that chemical engineering is already a dying field that it is not so modern compared to other fields, but I'm here to say you that this is not true at all. And the very first thing that I want to share with you guys is the job market. According to many government institutions, typically the US labor or the equivalent of the UK, you can ensure that there's a lot of work for recent graduates and experienced chemical engineers. Not only that, this is a pretty mature field and it is expected to grow a 4% in these 10 years. For some of you, it may be a small amount, but for many other degrees, especially the average degrees, this is quite common. Not only that, these numbers suggest that there is expectation of work creation and company expansions, meaning that this is for sure not a dying field, rather a mature, healthy, growing field. But probably you're wondering on the future. Many people have argued that chemical engineering is becoming less relevant nowadays, that there's a lot of things going on on tech or in sustainable energies. And although some people may think of this as a challenge, the chemical engineering field sees this as an opportunity. An opportunity to develop the knowledge of chemical engineering in these new fields, processes and products. For instance, we talk about renewable energies, we may be talking about the materials that are used in solar panels, we may be talking about the batteries that are going to be used in electrical vehicles, or simply the study of thermodynamics and transport phenomena going on through a windmill for wind energy. 
And what's going on is nothing more than chemical engineering adapting to the new trends, new technologies, and new society and cultural changes. And if you still have any doubts on whether or not chemical engineering is a dying field, I have a specific video for you. Myth number seven is that chemical engineers have no social life whatsoever, or at least you can work against that. Let me explain. I'm going to be separating these two main topics. Topic number one, student life, and topic number two, graduate life. Because, as you can imagine, these are quite different. Now, number one, as a student, we already know that student life is limited to maybe five years, seven years, or maybe even 10 years if you go for a PhD, but eventually you're going to end up working. So make no worries. If you really think that you are going to be a slave to student life, well, at least it's going to be for a short amount of time. And I really want to let you know that yes, chemical engineering can be a very challenging subject to study. It has a lot of courses that may be complicated. We're talking about mathematics, physics, thermodynamics, transport phenomena, and not only that, all these apply to unit operations, process design, and plant control. For sure, it may be scary for many of you guys, but it is really all about managing your time. And of course, you will need to sacrifice some Friday nights, weekends, maybe sacrifice some hobbies. Maybe we're also talking about parties, but overall, if you manage your time, you can ensure to have the correct scheduling for your studies. In the other hand, you can get to know a lot of people. You can meet students within chemical engineering or any other engineering discipline. Maybe you can get to know other fellow students from the university. And not only that, you can meet a lot of people through parties, clubs, and much more. Not only I would recommend you to go out for the sake of your mind, but also for the sake of networking. You never know who you are going to meet out there. Now, let's talk about professional life. There's a lot of jobs, a lot of works, a lot of companies, a lot of cultures. So it's kind of hard to say whether or not you will encounter always a good life to work balance or not. But overall, once again, guys, it really depends on you landing the correct job. And not only that, if you made a mistake and you're working in a place that you don't like that much, the culture is not that great, you don't have the life balance and you cannot ensure a social life, I'm going to be recommending you that eventually you need to ensure to land a job that actually takes care about your life work balance. So although this myth may be true for certain type of jobs, it's going to be only momentarily or temporary, meaning that it may last one semester, one year, maybe two years. But eventually what I have seen is that a lot of people burn out and suddenly they change jobs. So yes, I'm not saying you that chemical engineering is going to ensure that work-life balance, but you can work through it. So Jup, those are two myths that came to mind. But for sure, if you want to check out further myths, continue the list and check out the other video. On my behalf, that will be it. Let's continue with Jup. Thanks for that, Emmanuel. Always great to have you here. And now focusing on myth number six, gender ratios. Engineering as a whole is quite a male-dominated field, which is where this myth comes from, with some ratios of male to female being very, very poorly skewed towards the male side. In actuality, for both careers and studying, chemical engineers has the best ratios out of all the engineering fields. According to the Career Explorer website, which gathers statistics to do with US employment and studying data, chemical engineering ratios for male to female were actually 60 to 40 in 2023, which is by far the best male to female ratio of any engineering course studied in the country. If you compare that to aeronautical engineering, where it's an 82-18 split, and mechanical engineering, where it's an 84-16 split, chemical engineering is much better off in terms of near equality gender ratios. However, it's not just the US that has these great gender ratios. Looking in the UK, and more specifically Imperial College London through my first-hand experience, a couple of years ago, it actually hit a 50-50 split for male to female, which was absolutely fantastic. And in the years from then, it has actually gravitated around 60 to 40. So the chemical engineering male to female split is actually quite equal. Therefore, it's definitely incorrect to say that females don't do chemical engineering. It's more of an engineering myth that's found its way into chemeng. Those were the first five biggest myths, but the video is not over yet. A big thank you to Emmanuel from the ChemEng Guy for sharing your thoughts. It's always great to hear different perspectives. Click on this card here to watch the second part of this video over on Emmanuel's channel now. And don't forget to subscribe, leave your thoughts and suggestions down in the comments, and like the video if you found it useful. Take care.